see what else do we want to do we want to do you want me to demo uh maybe we should really quick may as well give uh, oh yeah i've got that would be amazing i've got burp suite up um okay uh so let me share this really quick okay so this is a vulnerable task manager ken and i are very familiar with this application we use it for code reviews and i use it for demo uh training purposes i have burp suite up um, we went into the proxy. I clicked on open browser to actually open up the browser that's that's built into Burp Suite. Uh, you'll notice I, I'm using the professional version here, but the, this does work on the community version if you want to as well. But what you'll notice is like it's sending traffic back and forth. This is what you want to see. Um, this VTM, it's, it's you know somewhat password protected. Uh, but we get to the login screen. Uh, this is what you see here. What I'm going to demo today is actually brute forcing usernames and passwords. There's two flaws on the login page that we're gonna look at. First is user enumeration, and then second is uh, brute forcing of passwords. So the first one comes from the fact that, you know, I, I put in something, a username, uh, something that doesn't exist. You'll see, I get this back, this invalid username, please try again, okay? Um, now, what if I put in something like my name, because I know there's an account, but the password is bogus, login failed. There's obviously logic behind the scenes that is allowing for the enumeration of users based on the error message that's being returned here. This is a very simple check. This is a, a vulnerability that actually I find in probably 90% of the applications that I test. Not necessarily on the login page, but it's an authentication vulnerability associated with identifying users during the authentication phase. So the VTM, the task manager is vulnerable to it within this, uh, you know, within the login page itself. And we'll notice that there were these post requests, right, uh, to login that actually contain the username and password, right? Here's the username that didn't exist. Um, and the response was 200. And then there's, a, you know, the same things here with, okay, there's Seth. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually take that request that gave login failed and push it to Intruder. Intruder is a utility built into Burp Suite that allows us to run attacks quickly against a specific endpoint. Uh, so we'll stick with a sniper attack. That means I'm just gonna send the same payload to um, a location in this, in this request. Uh, I, I eliminated the other, um, places that I'm interested in, right? Like the only place that I'm interested in right now is this username filled. Uh, the rest of them don't matter to me right now. So I'm going to attack that username filled and I'm going to drop different payloads into it. Uh, so I've, I've defined the positions, it's going to VTM, and then I'm going to jump to payloads and I'm going to add just a list of usernames, right? This, is, this comes with the paid version of Burp Suite. Uh, what is it? There's something like 8,000 different usernames that exist in there. We could create a list. We could pull a list of usernames from sec lists or other locations. This is the, the built-in one that's that's for Burp Suite. Um, but realistically, to, act, to run this attack, that's all I've got to do. The other thing that's going to be interesting, though, is actually doing some sort of payload. No, oh, no, not payload processing here. Let's see. What is it? Uh, the matching, right? I want to actually extract from the response whether or not that login failed exists. So I'm going to add a new extraction item. You'll see here's the response. Let's look for login. Uh, where is that message? In this here, that's the login, sign up, body content. Oh, there we go. Apparently I missed it. Okay, all right. So we're just gonna extract that out where it says login failed, please try again, all right? Um, okay. At which point it's actually gonna show us in the response what's going on. So I've got everything defined. Let's start that attack and see what happens. Okay. So anywhere that it says login failed, please try again means it's a valid username. Um, and you'll see it's going fairly quickly here. You know, we've already run 500, 600 attempts. Um, but we can start to look and see, okay, 
And it looks like there are a number of known accounts, right? Uh, there's an admin account, Ally, Austin. And the first one is just mine. This request zero is the Seth account that I used initially. Uh, but I've got to give it time to parse through all of these. Uh, you'll see as we spin through this, like all these different accounts that exist. And I could have chosen a smaller list because it is a live demo, but we are getting the responses back that we want. As a developer or as a you know someone that's monitoring the system itself, I sh I would be seeing these requests go back and through back and forth with the the database, and um, I would see quite a bit of activity and the failures that were happening all coming from the same IP. So there's probably some monitoring that needs to be happening behind the scenes and I could lock that out. But you'll notice that I'm not getting slowed down. The, the service itself is just sending responses again and again. Um, and I probably could have done more uh, you know, threads on this. It's doing a single thread, um, but there you go, right? Like we've got, you know, within, I guess what, two minutes, We've actually got what 10 or 12 different valid user accounts just based on the fact that the user the login form is giving um, yeah is giving a response that validates the user uh, and you know all of these we could probably go back to timing attacks or something else if we had to but the the messages that are that are displayed on that login page are extremely useful to me as an attacker because what's the next step here, Ken, after I get a list of usernames? If you have a list of usernames, you're gonna brute force passwords. Yeah, yep. We'll do the same thing. We'll turn it around. We'll brute force, pa brute force pa passwords next. And we'll take this, this payload. There we go, there's the Seth account. And you'll make sure that uh, you know, you're know you aware of the lockout restrictions, you know, yep. things like yep. that. All, that. all that kind of stuff, right? Um, because we do, we probably won't use like 8,000 different passwords on this. But, you know, specifically, if I wanted to attack, you know, let's see what Ken's password here. And do you want me to show this? Do you have time, Ken, for me to finish doing a brute force on a password? Yeah, yeah go for it. Okay. All right. So we know that there's, okay, so we finished there, like looked at 9,000 or whatever. And we've got a list of, you know, what, 10, 15 different usernames that exist in the application. We know that there's the Seth one, there's Ken. I'm going to pick on you because that's going to be fun, right? Always fun. Uh, Ginger's always, it. always fun. Yes, exactly. So what I'm going to do is actually come back to that same request because I know that there is something going on here um, and you know, change that value. We're going to change up the, we're going to clear it out. But instead of looking at the username field, because we know that Seth and Ken both exist, we're going to look at this this password field instead. So I'm going to add my target there, and then I'm going to change my payloads up, right? So we'll clear out whatever you've got there. I'm going to add from a list, and you know we got this nice password list that's in there too. Looks like there's three thousand of them. I uh, I don't think that we lock out. I'm actually fairly certain that we don't, but we're going to put force through <laughs> I, that as well. <laughs> I would be very skeptical of any lockouts. I'd be skeptical if it, yeah. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove that extraction as well because we don't need that for this this demo. That's 3,000 different. Um, this would be the time, passwords. though, I would probably point out to people about the fact that cookies, like you typically, when you're brute forcing, remove session cookies just in case um, people are trying to set a counter inside the session. So what that means is sometimes when you send invalid requests, they'll say, hey, put a invalid request plus one on this person's session. And so the actual controls on the session value, this has happened before for sure many times. Um, so that's why you always tend to remove the cookie just so that like you're not tracked in your invalid attempts by the session. Yep, yep. Um, good, so I think that's everything on that. So I, I'm gonna do the same thing and we're just gonna start that attack. And you'll notice there's a status of 200 on all of these. Um, like what, I, what I'm looking for is anything that's not the same, right? Whether that's the length or whether that's the status. Right. 
and I'm going to keep flipping back and forth, but we'll let it run through these 3000 attempts and then actually see if there is something here that allows for, you know, access. If I was going to be smart about it, I would probably create an account first and look and see what the response looks like when we are logging into an application. But as I just, I just found this login page, I found that there was user enumeration and there was no restriction on attempts to log in. I'm just going for it, right? Um, I wouldn't necessarily do this against uh, yeah, most applications, especially if you don't have permission to test against them, right? That's probably a bad thing. Uh, but we'll we'll let this one spin through all the way. Okay, so it finished. Let's see, status, status. Oh man, doesn't look like we actually cracked anything there. And I failed because I picked the wrong account. Jeez. That's because and this Ben guy is super secure. Super secure. Dang and it. dope and awesome and handsome and has good typing skills <laughs> and a lot of other cool things. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Right? Like, you know, so we'll try it against Chris because that was another one that was in there. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, the problem is the, you know, the passwords maybe aren't in this password list that we pulled up, right? So there might mm -hmm. be a different way that we have to target them. Also, for those that are curious or maybe don't know, when you know that there is an account lockout, say three bad passwords or something like that, whatever it might be, you'll tend to enumerate once or twice all the usernames or email addresses, whatever you've collected. Uh, and then inevitably someone will have a super weak password. And obviously it's very common to just use the name of the website, one name of the website, one, two, three, whatever. Right. So inevitably someone will have a terrible password. Password requirements only go so far. Yep. Oh. Yep. Yeah. And you'll see that here. Oh, I think I just saw something change. All right. So this was Chris, right? Let's look at status. Oh, there we go. Okay. So payload 302 length is 801. You'll notice that that's completely different than every other request that has gone on here. Um, so let's take a look and see if we can log in with that. Chris test one, two, three was the password that was used. Voila, now we're into the application. Um, we're using Chris's account and yeah, I, I mean, that's it, right? Like we, we, we successfully enumerated user accounts that exist and exploited the fact that there was no brute force protection by logging into one of the users that had signed up. Um, now this source code is out, out there and available. If anybody's interested, I could point you at it, but it is, um, Again, it's an intentionally vulnerable application that has these flaws in it, so you can test things out against it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. Still so didn't hack the... Ken's account, though. So I know. Ken, Same. you're the winner. Yes. <laughs> Woohoo. Get no prize. <laughs> Get no prize. <laughs> Internet points. <laughs> you win. Sweet. All right. So that's user enumeration and brute forcing. Um, you know, if anybody is, you know, I, I, I'd encourage you to go try that out on other vulnerable applications as well, whether that's Juice Shop and things like that. There's there's a ton of them out there that you can play with or try to find it in a bug bounty because it does exist. And if you can do it, you can earn some money finding it. So, um, cool. So, yeah, 